Hey folks! So about a month ago I posted a video about getting into the micro RC world on the cheap and easy and uh, that's where this little micro RTF comes in. I went over it in that other video but I'll give it a little recap here as well as some things to watch out for when taking it apart and things you can do with it in the future. I got this one from eBay. Uh, they're on Amazon as well for about 30 bucks. Uh, there's another version too that is very similar but I don't think it has a gyro on the yaw channel like this one does but it seems to fly just as well as this one from the videos I've seen. Uh, I'm not usually a fan of gyros, but this one is not very intrusive and helps a bit on the windy conditions, so it's not much of an issue. Uh, I'll put the links for both of them down below. Uh, it uses an 80 milliamp LiPo, a 2.4 gigahertz receiver, and two 4x12 brushed motors with just a foam body, so no moving parts other than the props, which makes installing it into a DIY plane about as easy as it gets. I've already built a micro model for these parts. It's a 12 inch P38, which I'll post a video of that soon. But I thought I'd do this teardown video separately so it's easier to find for people to look into, try to get into this sort of thing. The side of the fuselage hides the battery and receiver, and it's simply glued on. But the glue is pretty good, so it can take a little time to get things apart if you don't want to damage the fuselage. But if you don't plan on using it or saving it or anything, you don't have to be as careful. I ended up trying to use an X-Acto knife at one point to try to cut through the glue, but between that not really working and having a razor sharp pointy thing that close to a lipo, I decided to just keep using my fingers and the rounded edge of a 6 inch scale, which worked more than well enough. When taking off the propellers, you do need to be a little careful, because if that prop is on there on the motor shaft a little too snugly and you try to pry the prop off, you can damage the internals of the motor and then the motor is shot and you're out of luck which is exactly what I did here. I have removed more props from motors like this than I can remember, and I've only ever damaged a motor like that a couple times. Um, and of course this was one of those times. Fortunately I had a spare motor, although it doesn't have the same resistance as the original, so it took some trimming to get the P38 to fly straight and it made the turns uneven. Uh, it really wanted to bank hard and dive when turning right, but I would strongly recommend finding something like a really small draw, drill bit to push through the prop shaft hole while supporting the prop from underneath so you're pushing the motor shaft out rather than trying to pull the prop off. Uh, the shaft diameter is around 0.68 millimeters so it's pretty small but uh, if it saves you from having to not be able to fly because the damage or the motor got damaged uh, it's, it's worth it. If you plan on making a model uh, with the motors facing forward in a tractor configuration like the P38 rather than a pusher like this model is originally, all you have to do to swap things around is take the prop off the left motor, flip it 180 degrees, and put it on the right motor. Uh, same with the other side. Uh, this way you don't have to do any soldering of the motors to change things around. Total weight for the model is just under 10 grams. Electronics weigh less than 6 and the fuselage is a little over 4, so if you build your model and the empty weight is around 5 grams, it should be able to fly. Uh, the P38 I built is probably one of the biggest and heaviest models I've ever built that runs on 4mm motors. A 10 inch version probably would have worked better. Uh, the 12 inch seemed just a little sluggish, but it did fly, so... If you want to get fancy later and save some weight, you can trim the motor wires because they're pretty long. Uh, you could also try changing them to 4x10mm uh, mm motors also. You can remove and hardwire the switch so it's always on, although if you do that you do have to add a little bit of wire and a connector so you can disconnect the battery so you don't drain it and kill it. Uh, but then if you do that you can also switch, you could probably go down to a 50 milliamp uh, battery uh, it'll cut your runtime down, but it'll save a bit of weight. But yeah, that's about it. Pretty straightforward, and you can put these parts in pretty much any plane you want to build, and for only 30 bucks. It's pretty hard to beat that, considering when I first started in 2005, I think, I shelled out like $300 for my first set of micro RC gear, and I had to deal with the tiny, fiddly little actuators and trying to th solder 38-gauge wires, so... This is a, a pretty good way to do this if you haven't done it before. You don't want to try to figure out what electronics you need and where to get them and all that. But yeah, if you got any questions or anything, don't hesitate to ask. And uh, thanks for watching.